Hello and welcome back to another VOD review. We're gonna go back and we're actually gonna look at Dallas Fuel versus the Atlanta Reign in the losers bracket. Uh, this was the first team being eliminated. Obviously, both of these Western teams kind of got bopped in the Summer Showdown playoffs. They just, neither one of them could deal with the Wrecking Ball. So we're gonna have a look at how these two teams fared off against each other because they both actually went back to like the Western meta. Neither one of them tried to adopt the Wrecking Ball or too much dive. So we're gonna we're gonna sort of just have a look at these two teams, break it down, just sort of give them a look, uh, look see about how they were playing uh, in the grand scheme of things, and uh, yeah, go from there. So this was a pretty interesting matchup. So we're just gonna we're just gonna keep running through. It was a banger five map series. Losers pick sort of really coming in clutch here. So go from there. What is that noise? What's that noise? Hello? Am I freaking out? Alright, so we're gonna get May Sim versus May Doom. Uh, sorry, Sim Doom. Both teams are gonna play the bat. They're swinging, and Sparkle gets absolutely annihilated by the Doom Fist. Just Doom Fist things. Oh, great lamp by Iris. Iris, I think, is one of the players that Im has impressed me the most this season. Like, I don't think Iris is the best flex support we have in the league, but he is very solid, and I think you'd be fine to have him on your team, right? His, especially his Baptiste. I've been very impressed with his Baptiste. Sparkle comes back on Doomfist. Sparkle says, hey, if I'm gonna die to Doom, I'm gonna go Doom. So they actually switched the Doom and the Sim in spawn. How does Sales go on to win that fight? I, I think Hanbin getting Pelican, uh, getting Iris there was pretty big. Let's have a look at this again. So they get Sparkle off the bat, but Pelicans gets punished for it. That fire strike by Felix as well was pretty crazy. Yeah, Felix did a lot of damage. This is also great recognition by Hanbin to isolate Iris. I think if Iris stays alive, uh, if Iris stays alive, then Dallas Field will probably lose this because they would just heal up their tanks and then they would be fine, right? Because like, field is low, all that kind of stuff, but Hanbin isolating Iris, getting this kill, really turns it around for them. Because all of a sudden they have the healing to be able to take this fight. Even Hanbin even lives. Just gets the mega, lives. Hanbin's so good. Yeah, they played like three matches last season. Yeah, it felt like they didn't really know how to integrate Iris into the team last season and they were just more confident in playing Dogman. But I think Iris has really stepped up, so that's been big for them. Alright. Window goes up. Pelican comes from behind. Gator just gets isolated. Late lamp from Iris there. Oh, good shadow by Felis, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. Harmon kills Edison. Dude, Harmon's everywhere right now. Oh, I think Harmon used his bomb too early. I think Harmon just threw this. Did Harmon just troll? I think Harmon just trolled. I'm singing his praises and then he trolls. Oh, no, he didn't. He had to leave at the last second. He wanted to get his bomb off so he could, uh, so he would live. But like the perfect moment that he jumps out, he gets killed by the bomb. Hanbin is the best diva right now. I think Hanbin is probably the best off tank we have in the league right now. Like maybe Void, like Void and Hanbin, I would say are the two best that we have in the league right now. Hawk's very good, like a special mention, but I think Hanbin and Void have just been better. Hello there. Where's my water bottle? I don't know where my water bottle is. Who's the best le monkey in the league right now? Oh, definitely Felix. I don't think anyone's got close to Felix's monkey. Like, usually we would say, like, Smurf, right? But Smurf hasn't, like, well, Shock haven't really had a great season, so. Dallas is going to TP to move themselves around. I don't think they know Pelican's coming. Is Pelican going to get anything done here? That's the question. Oh, never mind. Hummin's waiting for him. He's going to have to ult. There's beats, there's walls, there's everything going on. So they get Sparkle, but Gator is low. They need to keep Gator alive. 
Oh, Fearless overstepped his bounds. Alright, Dallas get the cap again. Harmon's a monster, yeah. Troy needs to excel now that his whole team isn't top players for their role, like Moth and Striker. Well, no, I, I, I think... I think Choi hasn't had a great season so far, but I don't think you can say your team is worse, so therefore you need to step up more. I think that's, like, valid, and that's what Choi is thinking, and he wants to keep improving, but I think it's more the rest of the team needs to play to the level of Choi, right? It needs to be the other players stepping up, not Choi stepping up more to offset the fact that his teammates aren't playing as well, right? Yeah, I, I, I actually agree. I think the, the, the change of the back line, I think, has really thrown the, the, the shock through a loop. It just doesn't feel like they have that coordination, as they always have. So Dallas is going to go early. Oh, good shatter. It's kind of funny that Sparkle uppercuts them over the shatter. Big punches. And there it is. Dallas just playing to that high tempo, right? Just catches the rain off guard. They didn't have many ults going into that, so now they have the now they have the wall, they have the diva bomb. They have everything going for them. This should be hard for the rain to win. They're gonna need to like step up with like the window bomb. Yeah, but Dallas, this is what Dallas do better than any team in the league, I think, is just playing at this high tempo that makes it so that no one can ever set up. And it's something that I think Shanghai Dragons have actually adopted very well. And they've sort of made their own. Uh, especially with the Wrecking Ball comps. That's a great TP by the rain, though. If you if you miss that. Fearless goes super hard with the bomb and they just TP back to the point. They actually get the cap as well, which is enormous. So, like, if this is a long-form fight and Atlanta wins this, they can be in a really good spot here. Beat Engage. Wall. Where's this bomb? Uh, that Hawk bomb wasn't great. Kind of got caught in the air. Edison gets Jexe. Yeah, so this is a really big win for the Atlanta Rain. Oh, Sparkle doing big work though. But Atlanta should get it. As long as they don't stagger too much and they get a clean fight. Did Jexe lose his beat there? Or did it go down? Oh no, it went down. Because he, uh, do you think Jexe loses his ult so much more than other supports because he's greedy and waits too long? I think it's more that Jexe is playing aggressive. Though the way that they use the beat is very aggressive because of that tempo that I was talking about. So Jexe is more susceptible to getting, to losing it, right? So he, he puts himself in more precarious situations to get more value out of the beat. So yes, it's kind of greed, but it's also just like maximizing value. So Dallas stepping up, they have not a whole lot for going for them. Good block by Fearless. That was an ambitious Gator Shatter, but I like it. I would like to have seen Atlanta up the tempo here. Like, I would have loved, knowing that the opposition doesn't have beat, I would love to have seen them beat Engage here and just go hard in the paint. I feel like they're giving the fuel way too much space here. And they gave Dallas the initiative. So what happens is Dallas is allowed to go aggressive first, right? With, uh, with Sparkle and all that kind of stuff. So they force out the beat and then they can just play slow and disengage. And then they get the wall up. Then they're getting all this space. Oh, good shout out by Fearless. Yeah, I, I just don't think Atlanta was playing uh, proactively enough there. Just playing that a little bit. Like they let Dallas just take this white room, slowly walk forward, take the engagement on their own terms, but then also allow, allow them to disengage when they use the beat. I don't love beating gauges, but I think in the brawl, beating gauges can work quite well. I actually kind of like that bomb by Hawk. Has potential to just like flip somebody off, but no, oh, Field is just murdering everyone on the bat. Dallas had no winners, uh, business winning this. I just think Dallas played. I think Dallas played it well. They shouldn't have won. I agree, but that's. I just don't think Atlanta used their advantage very effectively. This is map one. Do you watch vids between maps? No. If you if you redeem a video, I will not watch it uh, until after the video uh, after this review. 
All right, so we got the head-to-head -head matchup once again. Dallas, well, actually, this is flipping. Dallas is going to come out on the Doomfist while Atlanta is going to come out on the May Sim. I was not sold on the Doomfist, especially on this map. I think it works pretty well on, uh, what's that one? Control Center? Uh, because of the early fight, there's a lot of walls, there's a lot of things you can do. But this map, I feel like every Doom punches in, doesn't get enough effectiveness, and then just dies, right? We'll see what Sparkle does with it. Okay, Sparkle playing a little bit more tempered. Yeah, Atlanta just sort of didn't do a whole lot. Was their wall bad? Like, what happened here? Let's, go back, let's have a look at this again. The Feast of Famine of Doom. Yeah, so let's see who the wall is. Oh, the wall was really bad. That, yeah. So this, this wall is their advantage, right? And they just kind of didn't get value out of it. That allows Sparkle to slow down. It feels like they bleed out themselves. Just couldn't do as much damage. Atlanta's so passive. Yeah, they're playing really passive right now. I don't think I noticed that when I was watching the match first, but they are definitely being the more pia uh, piassive, the more passive and reactive team. The objective is now active. The series is Dallas and Atlanta agreeing not to play Zen Ball. Yeah, they're also... I think it's funny because I'm pretty sure Dallas go Farrah at some point, right? And it's like, <laughs> it's just, I just feel bad for Atlanta because they, I think they tweeted it out of being like Farrah's like a dishonest hero, right? And it's just like everyone that they played against played Farrah. <laughs> it's like, guys, please stop playing Farrah against us. We just want to play Ryan head to heads. Or like, we just want to play Brawl's Gator cringe hero, yeah. So that was a good TP, sort of Atlanta flipping the, uh, flipping the script, giving themselves more positioning. Oh, that they had such a good advantage here until that shadow goes down, hits the back line. Is Masar gonna live? Wow, that's crazy Masar lives, but Gate is in trouble. Oh, that's not a great mail by Pelican. Pelican hasn't been great so far this round on that May. Yeah, it just feels like they're not able to get punished right now. Atlanta's just playing so... I feel like with the May, they need to just go more. Like, they're, they're just allowing Sparkle to just cycle his abilities without having to fully commit. May is the ultimate cringe hero, true? That's true. Alright, so they're going for the TP again. I hope this is a bait one. Yeah, I actually love this adaptation by Rain. Is that they- they- Oh! <laughs> this feels like everything that could go wrong for Atlanta is going wrong. Uh, so they, they, the wall is not very good again. Uh, and the shadow goes down, blocks the shadow. When the May wall, Sparkle gets behind him, punches Iris. Yeah, this is not close right now. That was a pretty good engage. That was a much better engagement by the rain. I just think, uh, yeah, a couple of things didn't go right. I think uh, Atlanta underestimated how difficult it was going to be going up against Shanghai. I don't think they underestimated it. I just think they didn't have the tools to be successful. I think they recognized that playing the the Torb slow, very, very slow style is very map dependent. And it also can get overrun by a certain other comps that Shanghai can play. Um, especially with the Farah, right? Like, I think these, like, these Torb McCree comps, they actually don't deal with Farah that well. Uh, you really need to play, like, a long-range hit scan, and I just, I just think it's a really bad matchup for the rain. So I don't blame them for losing to the Dragons. I just don't think they had an answer to what they were doing, because they can't mirror the same compositions as well, because they knew they would lose. So it's kind of like a rock and a hard place for them. Yeah, like, and, and that's it. Like, I, it's not like Shanghai is like, if you counter the, I think Chengdu is a team that I think if you could counter the Wrecking Ball comp effectively, there's a chance that they'll, uh, Chengdu would just kind of falter and that they wouldn't be successful and they wouldn't adapt. Well, I don't think that's going to happen with Shanghai. And I think they showed that against the, uh, the Hunters. Why not play more Kai? It was interesting. We see, didn't see more Kai. This is, in my opinion, a classic example of if we don't understand why, there's probably a good reason. And my guess is that Atlanta has tried playing Kai against the, like, fast tempo of Shanghai. And the hitscan isn't the counter to the fast tempo. Is If they put Kai in, 
I think that Shanghai would just not play Farah and they would just play the Tracer Sombra and they would overrun Kai, right? So Shanghai have like a double-edged sword where it's like, well, if you try and counter the Farah, we're going to hit you with faster tempo with the Tracer Sombra. And now all of a sudden the hit scan's a bit of a liability. So I think that is where Atlanta kind of got stuck of that they couldn't, there was no right answer. There was what is the least shit option. And I think the least shit option was not playing Kai and trying to play that Brawl style-ish, right? Cheng, do you using Ryan Torb on Route 66 quite successfully? Yes. So, and that's why I said it was map specific. And there are times in which Atlanta did try and play like the McCree Torb and stuff like that. The biggest issue with the McCree Torb is that as you saw, it worked really well for Chengdu. If you watch my review that I just put on YouTube, it worked really well for Chengdu for the first two points. It worked, they did a great job of like shutting down the dive. It worked very effectively. As soon as they got to the third point, all of a sudden their comp was useless. And all of a sudden they got close quarters. Shanghai just switched to the Winston and they just got fucking bodied. And I think that's the fear that Atlanta had of like, there's no map where you can play like Torb McCree everywhere, like, like hard bunker style and make it work the whole time. Uh, especially with how adaptable Shanghai are. How does Masar die here? Yeah, and I think, and that's it. Edison has more diverse heroes, and that's why they did it. Like, I think they want to keep the diversity of Edison and keep give them give themselves with more options. Ah, oh, Masar just gets uppercut away from the t teleporter. Brutal. This has actually been such a sad round for Atlanta. Like, it doesn't even feel like they're playing badly or they're going in with the wrong ideas. It just feels like when it rains, it pours kind of thing. Shatter. Didn't really get it. That's a great bomb by Harbin. Iris wasn't ready for that to pop off of the roof. Oh, that is ridiculous. The field's not going to get frozen by that. Good boot by Masa. That actually might let them back into the fight. They don't have the healing anymore. I think they're running out of warm bodies on the point, though. Yeah, I think Dallas, if they just disengage for a little bit... Oh, Doa didn't get the memo about disengaging. How does Atlanta turn this? Uh, the reason Atlanta turned this is because they get the boop onto uh, Iris. That boop by Masa. Let me go back and show you how important this is. Right? Um, because it is very important. So, like, what what is it? Like, let's look at where we are at this point. So, let's take stock. So it's it's six v four right now. Six v three. So you're like, holy shit, there's no way. But the beat comes down, keeps everyone alive, and then this boop right here on the on the fielder. Because fielder goes down, all of a sudden they run out of healing. They just don't have enough healing. Sparkle bleeds out. Doesn't have enough health. Fearless dies. They trade it for Hawk, but that's pretty good for them. And then everyone slowly comes back. So it was just, honestly, it was just a great play by Masai. And that was a sick rollout as well. You can tell he plays Lucio Surf. I don't even know if he does play Lucio Surf. masar has been doing this for years. That's just experience. And like, that's practice, right? He's actually put the time in. Oh, uh, this beat by by Jexay is a problem. So it's an all-out brawl, but that beat... Like, Atlanta just doesn't have ults coming up. I guess Pelican's about to get a mail. He gets his mail. They're in a pretty good spot. Oh, Masai gets hit by the bomb. Bingo! Victory. And Dallas Fuel gets the win. They get the turn. Pretty clean play by the Dallas Fuel. Like, they look really good in that Brawl matchup. He got stopped. We good? Did someone slow down da Dante? I'm good. That's good. Is he going to stop streaming? Because I don't think he's coming back from that. Called the fun bullies, Jake on him. Oh, no. Well, at least he has people around him that are willing to look after. All right, so let's get into this. Trace, uh, so, uh, Symmetra May, Brian Brawl, uh, both directions. We've seen this, 
be played by the Western Region. The, uh, the defensive team is going to try and go back and forth on point, while the uh, the offensive team is going to try and TP around. Das is going to go high ground. Lan is going to give it. Time to wait, my APM. All right, so here's the engage. That's a really good timing of the wall by Pelican. Isolated feels so well. If they can keep Gator alive... Uh, Atlanta didn't get as good of an engagement and as good a damage as they really needed to. Oh, Massage dead as well. Yeah, that's that's kind of like the dumb thing about these, like this Symmetra May brawl. Like it's it's determined by the little things, right? Because when no one has ults, it's like the little amounts of damage that you can squeeze out. Like a couple of things going right, little kinds of boops. How effective is the wall? So good first win by Dallas. And yeah, like lamps. I think lamps are the most important thing. Like. A, Fearless should have died. He went to one health off the bat, but the lamp keeps him alive. Able to stay. New defense point. Objective B. So this is a hard fight for Atlanta to hold because Dallas Field is going to have massive ult advantage. You can see Fielder has the uh, the window. They're going to have the wall as well, which I think is, in my opinion, is the hardest part to deal with on this second point. Okay. Hanbin's going main. Oh... I don't know how many times Pelican gets away with this. I don't know if this is planned, predicted, or just convenient, but he gets a lot of these throughout this series. I remember it happening. Just war that that just looks lucky. I don't think he's planning the shatter, but Fearless gets kind of kind of owned, and that's such a. I'm surprised that Dallas Fuel decided to try and run top right when they have a sim wall and all that kind of stuff. I would have much preferred to have seen them sit like Tim P to like the top of point or something like on the point and then just drop their sim wall. I think it would even you could have been, they could have even just dropped the sim wall like here and just run across, right? Um, I don't I don't think going top right. I think there's too much variance with just getting si uh, May walled like you saw just happen and then Felix gets isolated and then they die and then they lose their old advantage fight. So they, they seem to have wanted to have a crossfire like Fielder and Hanbin came up this way. So they kind of wanted to do like a delta split. Perkin does have ultra advantage. Yeah, but I was more talking about like the sim and the uh, and the bap window. Like they had the advantage for that. Like for the first like five seconds of that fight, they would have had ultra advantage. So utilize that ultra advantage to give yourself space. Literally, literally what they're doing right now is what I wanted them to do. Right? You see this? They go, they go here, they set up the wall. So uh, actually, if, if you miss this, this is actually a really cool uh, play that the spectators caught. So Dallas is going to go all, everyone through main and TP through here, except for Doa. Doa's a ninja. I don't know how Gator realized. Like Gator knew this was coming, which was kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, so Gator catches it. The, the May ult doesn't really get a whole lot of value. So it was a cool play, but it didn't really pay off. Oh, Pelican gets it eaten. Let's see what happens here. How does this happen? Harmin's watching for him. Harmin knows. Uh, little greedy by Pelican. I think he thought he needed to throw it. He kind of, maybe he did. Hawk takes it to the face. Oh wow, great play by Hawk. Guess he he plays aggressively knowing the bomb's gonna be there and he has bomb, comes out, kills the Reinhardt as Baby Diva and then kills someone as a bomb, so. Gator did this in week two. Yeah, but I like, I can imagine it with the Rhyme, but it's very hard when there are everyone CPing over here to recognize that there's a player missing. In the heat of the moment, it's hard to like do a head count and be like, somebody, somebody is missing. Wobble wobble, motherfucker. That was Don, not Gator. I actually, I, you're right. I remember Don doing it, but has Gator done that? I'm not sure. Baconator, thank you for five months. You make a good point. Where are the Diva Bomb Sim TP antics? They normally don't work that well. Like, there's so many things that can go wrong with a Sim TP Diva Bomb antic. 
All right, so this time they're all going to go through. They're going to force the point. I actually really like this window as well. Great wall by Pelican to counter the window, but Fielder can still get value. Jexy is going to use the beat aggressive. Massar is going to counter it with his own beat. Hawks just got absolutely melted trying to pressure Fielder. They need to get this kill into Fielder. They committed so heavily into killing Fielder that if they don't get this, they're in trouble. Ah, okay. The pressure gets Fearless and Jexy killed anyway, so... Custer stabbing mode. It's so bright. Maybe I need to like dim it a little bit. You can't tell that it's like <laughs> with how small the emote is, it's just like a disappointed look. It's like it's like the straight face, you know, when someone does something and you're like, that's what that's what the emote that's that should be the energy that you should see from the emote. Alright, so Dallas gonna TP to the exact same spot. I would love to see them change it up. And when they go for this TP, take the high ground. Just force them away. It feels like they've done the exact same thing like three times in a row, just hoping it'll work. Maybe it will this time. Oh, they get Gator. The Mayout's not great. Oh, wow. Did... Wait. Did... I think Doa just saved... Edison's life. Look at this. Edison is 100% about to get pinned by Fearless, right? 100%. He's dead. <laughs> Doa just helping a boy out, you know? Just like, hey, I don't want you to go down this way. I got you. Catches the wall. Edison dies anyway, but that's funny. And they're going to hold again. Yeah, Dallas are just taking these straight up brawls. They got a tick and a half from that one at least. <laughs> to be fair, I think Irish is Doa in the head. Yeah, I think people are dead. I think, yeah. P I think uh, Doa was about to die if he didn't drop that wall, so. Maywall is Phyllis's worst enemy. Legitimately, he's just getting owned left and right for these Maywalls. All right, so they're going to go for a Diva Bomb engage. A great wall by Pelican again. Yeah, like, I feel like they're not respecting Pelican's walls enough. Oh, I don't agree with that drop by Edison. Oh, it should be fine. So that was Rain's window for Harmon's Diva Bomb. So now they're going to go up again. Uh, yeah, I think you go second floor. Oh, they're going to TP up. Oh, that did not go how it was supposed to at all. That, yeah. Half the people made it through the TP. Sparkle fell. Hmm. I actually really like their TP to get to here. I just feel like they're not... I feel like every time they get the TP to here, they're just like trying to run into the open and that's giving Atlanta like... They're giving their backline space to work with. I would love to see them like try and force the rain to uh, uh, adapt and uh, rotate. Best of what the hero band is going to be. If you don't know what the hero band is going to be, they're actually doing a marbles stream. Plat Chat is doing a marble stream to determine. If you guys thought it was rigged, if you think Plat Chat is smart enough to rig a marbles uh a marble's actual drawing of the hero bands then i i don't know what to tell you right like so it, it'll be interesting we'll we'll see it, it, no one knows i guess at this point all right so dallas gonna tp to the high ground they sort of split up there oh wow i don't think they realize fearless was there crazy pin by fearless it's a good mail by pelican wow that, that, like, that was another weird approach by the Dallas Fuel. Like, they sim TP high ground, but, like, only half of them get through it. They get isolated. When would they do the marbles? I think it's tomorrow morning, like 10 a.m. or something like that. 30 seconds remaining. Plat Chat is about to ban Diva and create chaos. Yeah. If the May ball gets bogged, I'm calling... Uh, you mean the Zen, May, uh, Zen ball? We'll see. Zen can't get banned, which is nice, but I hope Wrecking Ball doesn't get banned. I think 
I honestly don't care about anything else getting banned. The only thing I don't want to get banned is Wrecking Ball because I think that is just like such a gift to the West. If the if if it gets banned, everything else I think is fair game. 10 a.m. EST. I'm not 100 percent sure exactly on the timings. Oh, great window, great window fire strike. I think here from Gator and uh, Iris. Let's have a look at this. Oh, that timing was clean. That Gator just put Dallas in the ground. Great play. Try not to give any more of a tick. Now, Ball is cringe. Ball's not cringe. And let, let me let me justify why I want to see that. Why we why we go here? I think it's the same way that I feel about like the East when they play Reinhardt. It's like I feel like it's kind of shitty that the East. Like, in the main melee, I think that is when we saw a lot of Reinhardt, like, get a lot of value. In the East, I just don't think can match up to the West in Reinhardt. And I think they got punished for that in the main melee, and I think that was a good thing. But, on the other hand, I very much think that the, it, the West should not be able to get away with not playing Wrecking Ball the entire season. I think they, like, this was the first tournament where they were like, hey, you have to play Wrecking Ball. Like, the East was like, you guys gotta play Wrecking Ball, otherwise you're gonna lose. And the West was like, no, we're gonna play Brawl. So that's why I don't want Wrecking Ball to get banned, because that's kind of like a band-aid fix for the West. And if anything, the, it'll be better in the long run if the West has to learn to play Wrecking Ball in the Countdown Cup, because if we if Wrecking Ball gets banned in the Countdown Cup, and then we go to the playoffs and Wrecking Ball is just meta, the West is going to struggle. Only Paris and Washington play Zen Ball, and even then that was very few and far between. That was only on like a couple of control maps. Like they weren't playing it like on a lot of different maps, so... Ball was June Joust and Summer Showdown though. No. Ball was only played by the Shanghai Dragons in the June Joust. Like that, that wasn't meta. That was the Shanghai Dragons meta. And they showed everyone that you should play Wrecking Ball. And then the West didn't continue playing it, right? Like the Shanghai Dragons showed how strong Wrecking Ball was in the June Joust and nobody reacted to that. Nobody else adapted to that except for the Chengdu Hunters. Even in the East, not a lot of teams were playing the Wrecking Ball, if I remember correctly, right? What what was the East? What were the rest of the East teams playing in the uh, in the Summer Showdown? Yeah, like a lot of people, they were playing like Orisa, right? They were playing Sumble, but there was a lot of Orisa. But I feel like there was like Orisa, there was some Winston. Like they, everyone else was all over the place. No one else has been playing the Wrecking Ball anywhere near as much as Chengdu and Shanghai. Yeah, Seoul play the Brawl. Philly play the Brawl a lot of the time as well, right? Yeah, like, the East was all over the place. Um, so it was kind of surprising that no one else tried to pick up the Wrecking Ball. And that, that that's just my whole point, right? I think everyone... I want Wrecking Ball to not get banned so we see everybody play the Wrecking Ball. Because I think the Wrecking Ball is a great test of skill for these teams. Alright, so Dallas TP to the point. Right, rain get in. So it's an interesting adaptation here we see from the rain. And I actually really like this. Instead of playing in the style in which you're like Lelucio the Engage, you play the Brig and the Arissa, which makes it more defensible, which forces the Dallas Fuel to engage onto you, which gives you more of an opportunity. I think this is better for the rain style because so far throughout this series, it feels like every time, except for on that second point defense, the Dallas Fuel have just been able to out-tempo the rain. It feels like they just like they just go faster and the Atlanta rain falls because of that. And so far, Gator seems to be the person who's getting isolated for the Atlanta rain so much. If he goes Orisa, you, you can't get isolated. Like it's you just fortify, drop a shield, and you're just chilling. So Hey, you should ban Bap. Bap could easily get banned. I like. I think almost every support is in the pool except for Zen, right? I would say almost every support has a chance of being banned except for Zen because Zen can't be banned. So, like, it could be anything. And I think every single one is interesting, right? You ban Lucio, I think that has a lot of, like, weights of you can't play this these fast comps anymore. You ban Bap, you can't play the Brawl anymore. You ban, um, Brig, I think that deal, that, like, 
I think that heavily weakens the Wrecking Ball comps if you ban Brig. Um, because I think Brig is very useful in sort of enabling the Zen. Um, if you ban Anna, I don't think that's as big of an impact. Uh, Moira would be like, w w removes a lot of those fast tempos as well. So I think there's a lot of interesting ones and they all have different effects. Anna Lucio Brawl is still possible. Yeah, and I think Shanghai showed that, right? I don't think it's anywhere near as good. I wouldn't say it's as much Anna, Lucio Anna Brawl. I think it's more of like a Lucio Anna dive. So Atlanta gets to the back of the point, drops a window. They did a great job of engaging, right? And this is like the opposite of what I was talking about with Dallas Fuel, right? With Dallas Fuel, they took this positioning and then they went aggressive, right? And then they met Atlanta here. Atlanta took this positioning and then bunkered down. And it's obviously more dependent on their composition because Gator is playing the uh, the Arissa and Massage on this this brig. But uh, let's see how Hawk eats this. Like this seems, this feels like Doan must have messed up a little bit to sort of have this be eaten. Oh, good catch by Hawk. I think Doa kind of just threw it at Hawk. <laughs> Iris going down here is really bad though. Is this just a fire strike through the window? Uh, that's kind of a feels bad. I think if 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 Iris doesn't get hit by this, I'm pretty sure uh, Atlanta probably just wins this team fight. They're in such a good spot. Yeah, I would say Atlanta probably just straight up wins this. The mail's so good. Like Masa doesn't get isolated, doesn't get killed. Like, yeah, that's really unfortunate that Iris goes down. Was that both windows or did he snipe that? What do you mean both windows? Like he he threw the fire strike through his window, and that's why it insta kills Iris. He just threw it in their general direction. He didn't know where the bat was. He just threw it at them. Do you think Reaper Sombra was the answer for Dallas to Shanghai? It's hard to know. Like, obviously, Shanghai used the Reaper Sombra to shut down, what, the Chengdu's Wrecking Ball comp. But Shanghai is also just, in my opinion, a better team than the Chengdu Hunters, especially in that style. So whether or not it would have worked against Shanghai, it's hard to say. But it would be interesting to see it get played. Good fast aggression. As soon as Atlanta goes, the the Dallas Fuel ready for that, right? So it's good. It's good recognition from the Dallas Fuel. Shanghai Dragons is like a more consistent Chengdu, yeah. And it was actually interesting. Like you can't take anything away from Chengdu as much as I love to sing the praises of Shanghai. Chengdu actually can match up in the mirror. In my opinion, in the mirror, like of like. Winston Mirror, like when they were playing the Winston Mirror, when they were playing the Wrecking Ball Mirror, when they were playing the Fire Mirror, I think Chengdu can easily match up to Shanghai. I think Shanghai has a slight edge, but they can definitely match up. Where Chengdu fell short was just they weren't willing to adapt. They couldn't adapt anywhere near as well. Shanghai recognized that they could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and they were like, we're just not going to play that game. We're just going to keep forcing you to adapt and then Chengdu just couldn't do it fast enough. Dante got his drink back. Well, someone called Jake again. Hey, well, hopefully he's all right. Bronte, Dante's gonna die. Hey, you gotta make your, you gotta live and you gotta learn from your mistakes. Bait. Oh, I would have loved to have seen them bait that instead of actually go for it. So they got the rally though. The rally is big. As long as they don't lose anyone in the first couple of seconds. Oh, that's a big shadow by Fearless. Sparkle should be able to clean this up pretty here. Yeah, that shadow was enormous. Interestingly enough, this is the second fight that Atlanta's tried to commit ult when they've lost the first pick or they, something's gone terribly wrong. So let's see if it works for them better this time. Looks like it will. Damn. Dallas had a pretty good attempt there, but that just shows the strength of the rally. Like, Phyllis hit an enormous shadow, but they couldn't get through it. They just didn't have enough damage, so great play. He's jealous of Sasha and Custer trying to be a show with that Brit of Tolerance. Yeah, hey, he just... Dante needs to learn his lessons. If he wants to go, you get absolutely placid. I, we've all been there before. Anyone who's who's drunk a lot has been there before where you just you just want to keep chasing that high of you want to get drunker and drunker and drunker. But it, it you it's all about finding that sweet spot. But you got to drink responsibly. But we all, we all live and learn. Hopefully he lives and learns. As long, at least he has people near him, right? He has people near him. He has people who can help him. 
I would feel a lot worse if he was like living alone in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but yeah. Incoming in 30 seconds. He's got Coach Jake to make more stacks. Yeah, exactly right. So he'll be fine. No, don't worry about him. All right. So we're going to see Atlanta Rain. I wonder if they're going to pick the same composition. So we go to Kings Row. This is Dallas Fuel's pick now uh, for the uh, for the Atlanta Rain. Atlanta Rain's going to try and adapt. What are they playing? I assume they're going to go the Brig Bap. There it is. So they're going to play the same thing that they just played. They're going to slow the game down for them. Let's see how Dallas Fuel adapt. Because I actually really like Atlanta's composition here. And I think it, it, the onus comes down to Dallas to react effectively. But I think, if I remember correctly of what's going to happen in this series, this has became a really cool rock, paper, scissors, right? Of like, Dallas were winning the brawl matchup, so Atlanta goes to the slower style, and then Dallas go to the dishonest hero, according to, uh, or the cringe hero, according to Gator. And, uh, and pick up the Farrah at some point, but... It's kind of cool seeing this, like, rock, paper, scissors and this, like, meta matchups. It's a good TP by Dallasville, though, getting onto the back line of Atlanta. Spark of Farrah counter, counter, and that's it. Like, you just look at Atlanta's comp. It's so susceptible to Farrah. It just doesn't have anything to deal with the Farrah. So. Oh, that. That can't happen. Like this, this just, this like, there's no, no easier way to say this than this just can't happen. Like there's no way they should be able to get away with this TP and just kill Filter. Like they needed to see this coming a little bit better. Like Filter just gets evaporated. Oh, I actually love this wall as well, by the way. They, they, all these people are stuck in here. I don't know what's happening. Feel a shatter. Gets Pelican. Uh, that should not exist in the game. That is broken. What? That is so good. Like, imagine if he was on the floor there. He probably would have got shattered as well. And he probably would have died with everyone else. That spot probably saved the Atlanta rain. Wow. Aaron. Oh, uh, Dallas is going to try and re-engage this? I don't like this re-engage at all. I guess it forced the flux out. Oh, Jexie! Does it again. Oh, that was ill-advised. That was just gambling that the lamp was going to work. And, and this was an awful fight for Dallas. So it would have been fine if they just used the window, tried to re-engage, wiped, and they force out the flux. But instead, they use the window, the beat, uh, and a uh, and the, the sim wall. That's, now it's going to be hard for them to cover. Rain has rally. Rain has mail. Dallas is going to... Oh, yeah, and this is where Gator said fucking Ajax, right? Hey, at me. <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually don't think Jaxxay knows what Ajax means. I don't think the Korean players know what Ajax means. What do you mean by Ajax? Ajax is like the C9, right? Where it's like C9 is called... It's like... The reason C9 is called a C9 is because Cloud9 got off the point a bunch of times, right? Um, in one series. So everyone just started calling that thing a C9. Ajax is a player, was a North American contenders player who did it... Was it three times in a map? Or something like that. So he dropped his... He did that thing three times in one map. And so it's it's been coined by North Americans, Ajax. In the finals, yeah. It was like... It was in like a really... In a situation in which you don't want to lose your beat. Alright, so now the Dallas feel they need to hard engage. So they need to go with like the male Diva Bomb. But Massage is going to use his... Uh, his rally... 
And it should be pretty easy for them to win this. It'll be interesting to see what they do. Oh, Sparkle gets Gib. You know how I was talking about in the first map, everything was going wrong for Atlanta? Everything's kind of going wrong for Dallas right now. They use the mailed as well. And the Diva Bomb. That's going to be a good Diva Bomb. That's a great lamp by Iris, though. That was a very good mail into uh, Diva Bomb, though. Pelican is just murdering everyone, though. This is a five map series. Flop. Flop, 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 flop. Oh my god. Oof. Pelican is always murdering everyone. That's kind of what he does, you know? That looked... And once again, Dallas used all their ores to try and win it. And I think this is actually something that Dallas needs to be careful about. Like, is... It feels like they think they're unstoppable at certain times and, the, and historically they were but sometimes they need to recognize that hey maybe we shouldn't use any ultimates they're trying to win every fight i think the san francisco shock struggles from the same thing of they're not playing at the same level that they were but they're still playing using their ults as if everything is winnable that's a great bongo wow surprising sparkle didn't die are they gonna just see on him that is brutal that is great play by atlanta but that is brutal for dallas It's in- Oh, Hawk just gets frozen. That was kind of bad by Hawk. I also don't know why everyone's fighting so heavily for this first fight. That was a good window by Iris, so he got so much value out of that. Okie dokes. Okay, so we got a sim wall, a TP under the high ground. Oh, great wall on the gator. Gator is just in frowny town. Yeah, that was just a really good wall. Gator just got so isolated. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Atlanta should have won King's Road. This was embarrassing. Ah, we'll, 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 we'll look at it out and see how embarrassing it was. They're currently owning right now, so. Is this the case of Dallas fall, uh, falling for their own hype a bit or needing to rein it in? I, this feels like Dallas is playing this, this composition as if they're playing against the mirror. But they're not actually against the mirror. They're playing against the Arisa Brig. So it feels like they're forcing everything so heavily against this defensive style and it's not really working. I don't think they really understand how to beat what the Atlanta Reign is doing right now. And that's what's giving Atlanta this bigger advantage. Good flux by Hawk. I've never seen a Diva Bomb do that. Like, you see, they, they literally just ran in, tried to shatter, tried to use a D-bomb, tried to use a mail, like, but like, they just can't even get close to doing anything that, uh, to shutting down the Atlanta rain. Oh my god, Edison is so sad. Look at this. Look at how depressing this is. He waits out the mail, right? He's chilling. He's waiting it out. He's like, okay, we're good. He hears the window, turns the corner, 225 health. He just takes instantly by turning that corner that's tragic <laughs> all right masai uses the rally needs to be careful running through this window there's an isolation here on the sim oh my dallas is just making plays again no way this is tragic for the atlanta rain that And here's the worst thing about that, is that is such a bad pin by Fearless. Like, it really is. They, they are... <laughs> their maze not here. If he doesn't kill someone, he instantly dies. He literally just instantly dies. He just pinned into a team which has full armor. But hey, if it works, can you really fault it? Maybe Felix is just a giga chad genius, and I'm just I'm just a armchair armchair Andy. You can't do that. 
That's not a proper Overwatch. Phyllis is like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Chad made vibes, yeah. Oh, great TP by the Atlanta Rain. Gets onto the high ground, drops a bongo. That is, that is how you use bongos and that's how you use TPs. That's great play. Oh, how does field uh, Masada again? Oh, and the pin on the Hawk. No way Dallas wins this fight, right? No, 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 no. Everyone chill, everyone chill. Iris is going to die to Harmbin, isn't he? Woo! Good soul by Dallas. And people don't like Sim. This is great TP team play. Yeah, I feel like people who like people who don't like Sim are the same people who don't like like Farah and that kind of stuff. They just think that these heroes fundamentally change the way that you play the game, and they don't like that. It's the same thing with May, right? It, and they don't like that it's not the way, it's not like a standard way of playing the game. It's a good flux. Forces the beat. Gator's gonna be careful. His fortify is about to run out and he's about to get murdered. What just happened there with Felix's shatter? Did he just shatter through the floor? Is he not far enough in front of the wall when he shatters? So as much as the animation looks like it's here, it's actually back here. <laughs> Shot the shadow with his mind. Yes, BS. All right, well, that's kind of lame. Um. No, it is what it is. Hey, you, you know what's worse than that? Have any of you guys ever shot a grab through here? I've seen so many grabs get shot through here. There's another one over here. Like I've seen gra I've seen shit fall down here and stuff like that. It's 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 a fucking a nightmare. So it, it it's cool aesthetic, but it would have been much nicer if they had rounded everything out so that there's not some weird interactions. So Mayo goes down. Get, Jack say boost him, but the the male by Pelican is very very good. Harmon Diva Bomb. Uh, unfortunately, everyone has a shield. Oh, nice boop! That is a great whip shot by Masa. I think if Harmon touches this point, there is potential that they get back. Look how many people are spawning. They're coming back with Doomfist May, all that kind of stuff. Dole is about to get a mail. I think if they if I think if Harmon makes it to this point, they're in a pretty good spot. All right, and now Dallas say, "Well, we don't know how to deal with your Orisa, so let's 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 do something cringe." And this is just a great counterplay, and this is just great strategy by the Dallas field, recognizing that they probably potentially right can win playing the Reinhardt if they adapt things. But why play hard when you can just play smart? And that's what Dallas will do here. They go to the Farah. Sort of flip things on top of uh on the atlanta rain force because atlanta just doesn't have an answer to this i do have a problem i don't really like that they're playing the anna winston i think you if they're gonna play this composition i think you just play i think you just play zen wrecking ball i understand fearless isn't the greatest wrecking ball and his fearless is way better and it gives you more win conditions but i feel like the wreck the winston just dies when he if he tries to do anything against this Right, Atlanta, cringe. Atlanta playing May double shield. That's cringe. Yeah, no. Well, I'm I'm just talking in Gator's uh, quote, <laughs> just quoting from Gator. It's just memes. It's just bans. Like I know that Gator knows that like playing double shield isn't also great and that kind of stuff. It's just he's just vibing. And here's my problem with Winston. Right, so Winston goes in, drops his shield, gets walled, and then he dies. 
There's no, he just, he doesn't do a lot. And I feel like they just need to wait for the Farrah to get more value. He's just salty and lost. Ah, eh, I feel like he would have been saltier if they won. Uh, even if they won, right? Like, it's just, uh, it's just the way it is. Some people don't like certain styles and stuff like that. So that's how I feel about every, if I ever lose to a Sombra, I feel, I feel slighted. I feel like I've, I've been cheesed. Or he has barrage, that's because he's shooting for free, right? And they don't have to do anything. Look at this, watch this. This is just like, you look at this picture as a fire and you're like, oh yeah. This is about to be good. There's no coming back from that. Gus isn't a big fan of DPS heroes in general, yeah, true. The bubble by Fearless though, yeah. This is like, like it, when this happens, right? Like obviously we look at, uh, we obviously we look at Sparkle, but let's look at this from like an outside perspective of everyone else around Sparkle, right? So Jexa is pocketing it. Fielder is healing him as well. I think Fielder's healing him. Justice. The bubble comes out from, uh, from Fearless to protect him. Hanbin also comes up. Just absolutely team play. Peak. Clean. So now this is going to force uh, Atlanta Rain to switch. So they're going to go to the Ryan Lucio. I think they need to switch somebody else as well. I think they can't play the Sim May. They don't have anyone to deal with this. It feels like they're trying to outpace it. If you're Atlanta, right, in this situation, what do you go? I think the Lucio Ryan's fine, but I think you need to switch off the Sim. I don't think you need the Sim anymore. I think you play like a Sombra. I don't think it's Kree. I think Kree is a bait. I think Kree seems like the answer, but Kree is not the answer because I think Kree just gets run over. Like, I think he doesn't get the space to do anything. I think it might be Tracer Sombra. Legs are the answer? I don't think legs are the answer either. I don't know. It's kind of hard to deal with it without... Could you go Echo? Maybe Echo? But an Echo, like a solo Echo doesn't get a ton done. You can't just TP onto the Ana. You got to run through a barrage of rockets to get onto the Ana. It's like, yeah, in a perfect world, you just TP onto the Ana, but the Ana is probably going to be playing in Narnia. And that means you're ignoring the Pharaoh. Like, let's try, let's see what happens from this perspective. Because that's their idea, right? They're going to play Brawl and they're just going to try and out-tempo the uh, the Pharaoh. They're just going to play fast enough that the Pharaoh doesn't kill everyone before they kill everyone, right? So they're trying to ignore the Pharaoh, right? They're trying to move while ignoring the Pharaoh. So here comes the Sim TP. But here's the problem as well with what uh, the Dallas are doing. So they have this Nano Winston. They don't want to deal with the Nano Winston either. They TP onto the back of the Ana, but as you just saw, just TP onto the Ana, well, there's everyone else between you and the Ana. That did cost Dallas a lot of ults. What if you go Reaper May? Actually, Reaper is a good shout. I don't think, I think you dropped the May. Maybe. I think the May is going to struggle to get value. Maybe, I think maybe like a Sombra Reaper could be good. It's at least going to force Fearless to switch. And I think the Sombra, Sombra does a pretty good job of actually dealing with Farah. And also putting pressure on the Ana without... Without needing to like dive your entire team. Then they get stuck in the old cycle, yeah. So they go to Lucio Moira, which is fine. So they're going to use the symbol. That just gets instantly MP'd. This feels very poorly tracked. Yeah. And the, the MP just goes down. Oh, is Jexy dead? No. Like, Mayo is so hard to get value out of, right? Like, look, let's look at this from Pelican's perspective. How do you get value out of this Mayo? Like, <laughs> guys, my Mayo. Oh, we're all dead.
so they go to the McCree eventually. Like, let's let's go back and watch this, right? Of like Justice the McCree. Low one kill, yeah. Well, we'll see. It might get better. Oh god, they're playing Legs McCree. <laughs> they go Legs McCree and Sparkle just switches to Doom Fist. And that's why you can't over switch, right? Like when we're talking about it, obviously, if you go double hit scan, it's going to deal with the Pharah, right? But if you go double hit scan, they're just going to switch. Uh, and that's what Dallas do. They recognize that they're gonna switch to double hit scan and then all of a sudden they just go to the Doom Fist. Talking of cringe heroes though, Doom Fist. Let's let's put Doom Fist at the top of that list, okay? So they have the EMP now. How do wait, what? Oh, what? What is Jexe doing? Gets the boop on Edison into the uppercut? Wow, that's just filthy. What is Jexe? How? They didn't know. Yo, that was kind of sick. And now they're in trouble, right? Oh, that EMP. He actually was about to pin the Doom. EMP goes down. That should just be a clean team fight right there. Oh, Masa almost got Filter. Please keep. Is Filter gonna die? Yeah, that would have been really bad if Filter died. <laughs> the legs. Okay. <laughs> Let's see how the McCree's doing. <laughs> Fucking hell, dude. That, this is... Yeah, I think Atlanta just don't have a good answer to what Fuel are doing. They, they're kind of lost right now. Would Ball over Winston be really worth it here? Yeah, I, I think Ball is definitely a better hero, but I think Winston suits Dallas Fuel better. So if it works for you, works for you. Like, and as well, Fielder on the Anna, I think Fielder on the Anna instead of like the Zen. I, I, I think the Winston Anna is fine. Like, it, it's, it's definitely not an issue. All right, so let's, let's look at this from. Uh, Atlanta's perspective. Atlanta's going to come out with the Arissa Brig because they... I think you can just assume that Dallas isn't going to play the Farrah defense, right? So they get on the high ground. Dallas CP the high ground. Oh, I don't know if I agree with Atlanta dropping here. They need to get away from the team. Because they don't want to clash here, right? Yeah, the, the, the worst case scenario was Iris getting caught right here. Like that, I think Atlanta rotated quite poorly there. He need, Iris needed to get through that TP with the rest of the team. Can you explain why Dallas didn't stick with Farrah's Sombra defense? I thought Shanghai already proved that it works. No, I don't think even Shanghai played Farrah on defense. Um, and if they did, I think they did it against Dallas because Dallas don't have a hit scan. If Dallas comes out right here playing the Farrah defense, Atlanta Reign can actually get a lot of value. They can just play McCree Soldier and it's actually not a meme because you can pressure the Farrah away. So the defense can't switch, but the offense can. So if they, Dallas Field goes a very like tunneled comp, 
which is a pharaoh that's very easily countered, it's bad for them, right? The reason you see pharaoh on attack is the defensive team can't switch. So if you switch to pharaoh, they can't switch away to deal with it. So, but the inversely is true uh, when the roles are switched. Also, no, wait, how did Atlanta win this? Like, sorry, they lose Iris pretty early off the bat. How did they win this? So they lose Iris, but Fearless goes down. Oh, that's a great wall. That is, that wall actually saved their lives. The fact that they weren't able to get a bunch of kills, get a bunch of freezes, and Spark was unable to beam them down, allowed them to consolidate. Do the land not have a Farrah play? It's not about a, having a Farrah play. Like, I assume Pelican can play Farrah. It's just about willingness and want to play Farrah. Have you already done Hanamura? Yes, Hanamura was last map. Alright, that's a good pin by Fearless. This is a pretty good fight for Atlanta. They've got their backline somewhat safe. That lamp is insane by Fielder. Is that gonna keep Fearless alive? Or oh, Joel goes down anyway. I think he loses his mail trying to throw it as well. This is bad for Dallas. Yeah, this is real bad for Dallas. They use mail, they use wall. Atlanta has so many ultimates. So much just happened in one second, yeah. There's a lot of TPing and a lot of back and forth. Alright. Not bad, not bad. The May Wolves by Pelican have been much better than they were in the first map. Oh, that's very early. That is way too early in my opinion. Oh, they broke the TP so that Fielder is stuck. Poor Fielder. Or... Uh, Good pull. I would love- I don't know why they didn't flux there. I feel like they should have fluxed right there, right and then. They got a great pull. If he just fluxes, they're in a good spot. By not fluxing, I feel like he's putting himself at a disadvantage. I guess he knows that they're about to engage. The flux is still good. The mail by Pelican is good. This should just be a free fight win for the Atlanta Reign. That was well done. Oh, that shadow on the Pelican. Should be fine. Okay, Atlanta rolling. They're going to win for sure, right? Oh, no, no, no. All right, so now we got the Doomfish from Sparkle coming out. They're going to have Bongo, so they're going to Bongo on the high ground. Let them up. They're in a pretty good spot. They know that Dallas can't really do anything. Just keep pushing the cart. We're rolling. I actually remember this. This Diva Bomb by Hanbin is insane. Look at how good this bomb is. They react differently. Iris kind of messes his, his movement up, but Edison gets caught. Like, Ed yeah. I really know why Edison... What Edison tried to do there, but it, he just gets caught. But that bomb was so good. It forced so much positioning out of uh, Atlanta. Doesn't get his wall down. Like, Addison should have just used the wall. Yeah, like, there's no reason he shouldn't have used his wall. As soon as that diva bomb was thrown, he should have just dropped his wall and they should have gone from that. Alright. Good, good times rolling. Alright, so Atlanta is going to play Brawl on defense, and yeah, I'd be surprised if Dallas don't play the Pharah. Especially seeing that they're going to... I think, if anything, this is quite poor hindsight by da uh, Atlanta just playing the May Sim. I feel like they're just asking... They're just telling Sparkle to play Pharah. 
Like, it, it just worked so well against them. Like, I, I, I don't really agree with this decision to not counter the Pharah. And that's it, like, Atlanta Rainfields that need to go in, but they just getting shot. Even if they get a bunch of kills, like you see here, they can't deal with the fire. The fire is just free, free shooting. The fire is going to kill you all eventually. This is a free barrage to Sparkle. Yeah. He, 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 like, they just don't have anything to deal with him. He's just, he's literally just playing the game for free. This is Kovacs, but for rockets. Gator pins though, which is kind of funny, but. All right, not awful for Atlanta, but not great. Now they have to deal with an EMP. I feel like Pelican should switch off the May. Even if he goes like a Tracer, right? Like if he, like, I think just anything that's going to apply pressure that isn't like a May Sim. I feel like, I think you stay the Sim for the wall. But even the wall is just going to get EMP'd. Like as soon as they walk forward and try and use the wall or try and use an ultimate, they're just going to get EMP'd and they're all just going to die. So they're going to Sim TP to the high ground. Ooh, did Hawk? Okay, right, that's fine. Alright, they rush the cart. I actually kind of like this play by the Atlanta Rain, rushing the cart. Probably just EMP, yeah. Oh, nice. Pharah Mercy is pretty strong. Yeah, if you don't have anything to deal with it. I Pharah is one of those like niche picks that works when people aren't prepared for it or like like thing but as soon as if you try and just play pharah comps everywhere it never works i think the only time a pharah comp has worked in a long long term has was like shanghai dragons who won 2019 stage three and that is only because everyone was just so enamored with goats that people forgot how to deal with shanghai with pharah right mercy meta no even in 2018 when mercy was meta pharah got played like bits and pieces but for the most part, that was sniper meta, right? Like, it, it's sort of used as like a niche counter comp if like you don't need to switch too much, right? Try and force out a, uh, ultimates if you're a laner. If you don't try and use ultimates, they might not use ultimates of their own. Because Dallas wins in the neutral here, right? You, Atlanta needs to use ultimates to win. But like, all right, let's go. Let's go back here, by the way, and like show you why like the McCree. I don't like the McCree. So here comes the McCree. He's like trying to deal with the fire, but he can't do a whole lot. Like he's just shooting from the back line, but he just gets pressured. He, ne you never really get a free opportunity to shoot, and that's why I think a lot of people think McCree is the hard counter to Farah. McCree is a counter to Farah, but not against the dive. If you're playing a slow comp against a dive, I feel like it's way too easy to get overrun. The McCree can work, but you need everything else to apply pressure in a different way. What would you pick instead of Kree? I think they need like a... I would love to see like a Tracer. Like Tracer, maybe a Sombra. Like tr try and get picks. Apply pressure in a way that makes the Farah or the Diva have to turn around. Because the biggest issue that the Dallas Fuel, uh, that Orlando Rain are having is, if you're the Dallas Fuel, you only need to look one way. Atlanta is walking one way. They're all walking together, going through TPs, or coming in the same direction. So Farah only needs to look one way. Phyllis only needs to dive one direction. The Ana only has to play in the back line. Like, if they have a Tracer or a Somber, that's forcing Fielder to deal with the Tracer, which is then going to force Hanbin and Jexe to turn around to heal, help Fielder, right? And maybe Phyllis can't just dive straight into the back line, and all of a sudden Sparkle can't play as aggressive because he doesn't have as much support. The... It's this idea that sort of got worked out in like 2018, 2019, where if you 
do a lot of flanking and apply a lot of pressure in a lot of different directions, these styles of these farriers can't just like play very uh, linearly. Isn't this the same theory for Bastion? Exactly, right? If you're trying to deal with a Bastion, the, the counter to Bastion isn't to try and out damage the double shield of Bastion. The counter is to flank around the Bastion, right? Make it so the Bastion has to look in all directions to be able to, to solve a problem. And then all of a sudden, your supporting staff that are helping the Bastion all of a sudden are getting peppered from a lot of different directions. So you don't deal with the Bastion. The best way to deal with the Bastion, or in this case, the Pharah, is to k take all the other pieces around from the Pharah. So trying to kill the Pharah is like, is a fool's errand in a way, right? I want Sparkle Pub. You want to see Sparkle on the Doomfist? Let's do it. BMP hits four and they insta kill Doha. So this is a pretty good fight for the Atlanta Reign so far. Oh, Pelican doesn't live with the male. I hate seeing Doomfist succeed. Chips gonna force the uh, force the doom to kill Fire Mercy. Just say, <laughs> yo, let's get chips. Right? Is that what we're, where we're taking away from this? Sparkle chose violence. Yeah. God damn. Big play. I actually, I I was really confused. Actually, this was a really interesting pick by Atlanta Rain. So you just lost, right, to Dallas Fuel playing Farah, and. The other escort maps in this pool is, What are the other escort maps in this pool right now? It's, it was Route 66 um, Junker Town It's kind of interesting we haven't seen a single bit of Junker Town uh, so far It was Junker Town, Route 66 and one more, right? What's the other escort map in this, in this Summer Showdown map pool? Jib, right? I think this is the best Pharah map on in this in, in, out of those three maps, right? Uh, Route 66 Pharah is not good because the the skybox is so low, and Gibraltar is just for obvious reasons. Pharah has just never worked on Gibraltar for the most part. So this is probably the best Pharah map. So I was like, why, if you were the Atlanta Rain, would you send Dallas Fielder here? And it was actually interesting because I think the answer is Atlanta Rain is very confident. I meant Junker Town. Yeah, sorry. Uh, did I say Route 66? Junker Town has a really low uh, sky box, so you can't play Farrier. You can actually play Farrier pretty well on this map. I think you can make it work. You can definitely get a lot of spam in. Um, but I think... I would love to know if this is true about the Atlanta Rain, but I think the third point for Atlanta Rain is way better for them. I think that is way better for their style, and I don't think the Dallas Fuel would have, a, have an answer, especially if they switch to their Arissa Briggs shit, right? And I can't remember if that's exactly what happened. I think it might be. But this kind of felt like, if you're like Dallas Fuel, right? You go to Route 66. You go to Route 66. They're going to play May Sim on, uh, on defense again. I feel like you just play the Farrah again. I don't know if Dallas do. Part of me thinks that Dallas play like the Wrecking Ball or some shit. Five, four, three, two, one. Only point C sucks for Farrah, yeah. So I wonder if they were willing to just accept that Farrah's not going to be good on the third point and that will give them the advantage. Atlanta wins this map, don't they? Yeah, so that's why I was... But I was questioning when this was happening, like... At the start of this map, I'm like, you just got bodied by a Pharah, right? And then you go to the... One of the only maps in which they can play Pharah, and they play the Sim May defense again? It seemed questionable. But let's see how it plays out. There's a lot of underground? Not really, though. Like, you say there's a lot of underground and things you can hide under, but if you're hiding underground, then you're already losing the game. The Farrah doesn't need to kill you to win the game. Okay, so they get the res on Doha. So obviously this isn't going great. Edison and Pelican are staying on the May Sim. Yo, what's up, Targa? Justice 
Fab Barrage. Sparkle's just kind of pounding. Not even close. Hawk goes to point. So Hawk's going to get a pretty reasonable stall on the point here. Okay, same thing again, same thing again. They're going to have the May ult at the window. So they're probably going to try and force it, right? They're going to try and force the May ult over here. But once again, they're walking out of a choke against the Pharah. Gator just dies. I don't know what, like, yeah. I don't really know what the Atlanta Rain need to do to counter this. They could potentially go like a, like, they, yeah, I think if they went like a Winston Anna Brig, I think that Winston Anna Brig stuff could potentially work against this and play like a Tracer Sombra sort of ignore the fire because the, the mercy is very susceptible to death in these compositions i don't know if i how i feel about this this sim wall late maybe he's planning on switching anyway what's out the emp not the worst thing in the world but at the end of the day what gator's not gonna die how's gator not gonna die please kill gator gator's just standing on the point with his shield up trying not to die Drunk Dante is currently interviewing Jexa about being on Dallas. I'm rolling on the floor laughing. <laughs> that can't end poorly at all. Do you know why Dallas chased the Diva and Lucio for so long instead of capping first point right away on King's Row? I have no idea what you're talking about in that kind of stuff. Without context, sorry, it's kind of hard to say. So, Edison switches over to McCree. Let's get let's get McCree pop. Let's see how this handles it. Because it is kind of open, so Edison should have some good sight lines to get onto the McCree. And that's why the McCree generally isn't very good against this dive because you're very you just die like right. And the the team isn't built to save him right. Like they have Lucio Bap, like Bap maybe if they get a good lamp, but it's not that going to be that useful. Like May Ryan Diva, they don't have a lot of tools to help. The rest of the team, so. What if, uh, uh, what if I admit it? Rain could mirror, but they don't... I don't think they have shown a willingness to play the Pharah, so they pro probably don't have a lot of practice in playing the Pharah compositions. But I think, as I said, if they went to, like, Winston, Anna, Brig, uh, Tracer, Sombra, like, I definitely think they can play that comp and make it work, and I think it would work against this fuel comp. There's a reason no one played Pharah against that Winston, Anna, Brig comp, is because... The Mercy's too susceptible to death. The Winston gets bullied. It's hard for the Sombra to dive. All those kind of things. But I think Atlanta forcing the brawl here is kind of misguided. Justice. This was a pretty bad barrage from Spark. I remember when this happened. Sparkle not losing mech there was insane. It did force Lamp though, which is a big deal. Fearless has Primal. And generally when Fearless has a Primal, they g you generally win the fight. Like, Edison just isn't able to play the game as McCree. So I'm just, like, reiterating the point that I, I, I've been saying that McCree is not the counter to Farah always, right? Obviously, the McCree is valuable to shoot them out of the air, but it is. So this is where I'm, like, really hard questioning Atlanta Rain. Be like, guys, what are we doing here? Like, you can't... Why would we pick Route 66? And I think this is this hold is where we go. I do think this is misguided by the Dallas Fuel. I think they should just play... Okay, there we go. He, he switches off to Genji. He goes to the Doomfist. I think if they just... I think they should just go the... Um, if they went Sim May, I think they just win, right? Like, why not go Sim May? Just go, the, just go the proper comp. If you're the Dallas Fuel. I don't know why they're trying to play this Sombra Doom. It doesn't make sense to me. They're like... They know a counter that works. They can play the Mirror Brawl. They've made it work historically in this series when they played the Mirror. It's probably your best uh, best direction forward. But by playing Doom Sim, I feel like they're opening themselves up to just get absolutely bullied. I talked about it a little bit before, uh, uh, Alan Daje. The counter to the Pharah is to kill everything around the Pharah. And playing Brawl is not going to do that. They need to play a dive. If you're going to counter the Pharah, you need to play like a Tracer, Sombra, Winston, and a Brig. Like that that meta would beat the Pharah meta. I think 100%. Oh, that's a good shadow by Gator. 
Felix just got MPD pretty hard. That was an important shatter as well because Dallas Fuel had a lot of positioning. No, you can't play double shield poke against Barry Mercy. You can't play the objective. You're just you're just so unable to do anything. It can work, but it's not. I don't think it's a consistent way to win the game. Okay, I don't know why I'm watching Gator. Let's watch Sparkle here. Yeah, I really question this Sim Doom, Anna. Like, uh, it, it feels like Dallas knows the answer. They have the answer. They've played the answer. They can easily win this, but they just like, they're just not playing it. And now they're like, they're just kind of getting bullied by the McCree Tracer. I don't know. It seems, it seems very weird from Dallas here. Did I say, did I say Tracer Sim? Yeah, I meant Tracer Sombra. Sorry. Dallas showing stubbornness? Yeah, this feels, this seems very weird. This feels like a very weird decision by the Dallas Fuel to not play the, uh, not play the Brawl. Because you can just see the issue, like, uh, <laughs> Doom, Doom Sim, uh, Sombra is so bad against McCree Tracer. I think McCree Tracer are, bo are both very good against Doom and... Sombra. So they're, they're in a really bad DPS uh, mismatch, but then they're also playing the Ana instead of the Bat for their Reinhardt, so Felis is a lot more susceptible to death. They have to just like hope that Sparkle murders everyone. And I guess if you're just going to EMP Nano Doomfist and Sparkle does murder everyone. But uh, the thing is, Atlanta should be able to come back into this fight. So they got a beat engage. That's a good beat. Fields gets another good shatter. Oh, actually, it was Gator last time. Gator throws his own. As long as Atlanta doesn't get wiped, they're in a good spot. Actually, look at this tech. I actually saw this live. Look at how cool this is. So, so Sparkle is like, all right, I'm going to punch. Let's punch at the right. He's low health. Gator pins to counter the punch. So Sparkle dodges it, doesn't actually pin at Gator, and Gator just turbo feeds because he went for the counter pin. So Gator was probably dead regardless of if they counter pinned, but he would have knocked Sparkle down. So cute little tech there by Sparkle to just like play chicken. Swapped off Doom, as he probably should. We're, they're just in a bra brawl of a fight, and this is bad for Dallas. They're just staggering the point. See, so remember, Gladiator is failing point C against Parachute to Tracer as well. Yeah, the Tracer... The Dallas Fuel just didn't have anything to deal with the Tracer, so the Tracer runs around for free. And that sort of like goes back to what I was talking about earlier with like these other comps. It's like Tracer is very valuable because she doesn't need many resources and she can apply so much pressure across the board. And if it, especially if they're going to play a Mercy Anna, like think about it with Mercy Anna. If you're playing Farrah Mercy, your Anna is alone, theoretically. You can't be healed because the Mercy is generally near the Farrah. So if you put pressure on the Anna with a Tracer, then the Mercy is going to have to go back and generally help the Ana at some point, right? If your dive is effective enough, which then means the Farah is susceptible to death, which means the Farah has to play more passive, which means the Farah can't play as aggressive, which then gives you more space, right? Five, Just trying to directly kill the Farah is never the play or that kind of stuff. Dante is now 13 in. Well, I wish him luck. He is at the point of no return. All right, so Elena Reina going to play the Torb Reaper to counter this Winston style. I actually like this. I think the Torb Reaper hard messes with this uh, with this Winston comp. Oh, 
Like, they just have so much damage that it's going to be so hard for Fields to die. They need to get onto the back line. So they need to get the Nano onto Fearless. So they need a Nano Fearless in, that's their win condition, right? They're gonna have... They need enough damage to get through the, the sustain of the Atlanta Rain. I don't love this comp by Atlanta with how they're not able to control positioning. They do a good job of disengaging into the room though. Sparkle Pulse Bomb needs to be big. And it wasn't. Yeah. And it, like... Dallas Fuel need to get kills before they start bleeding out. Because Dallas Fuel's always going to bleed out eventually, right? And that's why they needed to get kills with that Nano. The fact that they didn't get kills with the Nano... Lana Rain's going to start getting ultimates. Yeah, and they just can't punish. This is a great play by Atlanta. Understanding that their win condition is being playing under in this gas station. Because Dallas Fuel can never walk into this room. We got rally on rally action. Really thought it was lame for Dallas to pull out Pharaoh when they got backed into a corner. Not gentlemanly and all. <laughs> Who gives a shit about being a gentleman when you, ju when you win games? Just play to win games. Just win. Edison with the Reaper on point. But there's two Divas and <laughs> double matrixing. Good shatter, and that should just be it. Defensive star by Atlanta Rain. And Dallas used everything to try and hold that. They used Copy, they used Diva Bomb, they used Rally, they used Nano again, they used Trace, but they are out of all options. So I think they're probably gonna switch to the Pharah. If Jexa goes Mercy, I assume that means they're going to go fair. But like, if you're being serious about that song day as well, it's kind of... Atlanta did it first. They were playing Rhyme Brawl. They both were playing Rhyme Brawl and Li Zhang. Atlanta got bopped. So then Atlanta went Orissa Brig. You're going to tell me that Arissa Brig isn't disrespectful and ungentlemanly? And so they went Arissa Brig. So Dallas feels like, well, if you're going to play Arissa Brig, then we're going to go Farah. So really, Atlanta did this to themselves. But at the end of the day, like you you just play whatever you can to win. I don't, I, I don't care. Like, I hate Doomfist. I hate Sombra. I don't like Mei. I don't like these heroes. I don't think they're good heroes. They're fun heroes to play against. But if it's going to get you the win when it matters, then fuck it. You do whatever you want. There's no honor among competition. If you can do anything to win, you'll do anything to win. So Harmon gets Edison. That's a great dive. I don't know how Dallas wins this. They just managed to get the right picks at the right time. I guess Atlanta switched back to the Brawl. It's actually crazy to me that Atlanta keeps switching back to the Brawl. Like, why did they go back to the Brawl? I feel like they need to try something else. This this Brawl, this Lucio Bap Reinhardt has never worked against this Winston Farah. Like, it hasn't worked once, especially with the McCree. It does seem weird that Rain seemed very stubborn to... Uh, they, it seems like they really but genuinely believe this Lucio Bap is going to be... is going to beat the Pharah. At least they have a Tracer now. I like the Pelican Tracer with this comp for the exact reason that I'm going to talk about. Let's actually watch this from Pelican Pub. Yeah, they died too fast. Yeah, they just died too fast in the room.
Thing being less adaptive, I feel like Atlanta is a team that always comes in with a set strategy and doesn't, and very rarely adapts on the fly. Um, I, I'm trying to think of times that Rain has done that. Like, I'm, I'm not talking about like little adaptations. I'm talking about like big adaptations of compositions, right? It's like, felt like Atlanta came in with, we're going to play the Reinhardt Brawl. If it doesn't work, we're going to play the Orisa because we know the Orisa can work against the Brawl. But now that Dallas went Farah, it doesn't feel like Rain were prepared for this, which kind of feels disappointing because they did just get knocked out to they got knocked out to Chengdu right playing the Farah or Shanghai playing the Farah so uh, that's a great high noon though by Edison Dallas gave a lot of positioning here why did Dallas give them so much positioning I feel like if you're Dallas you don't want to let them out of this door yeah Elena can play other things I don't think they're as good as those things as uh Reinhardt and Orisa and maybe that's why they want to avoid them but they do they can yeah, I... Oh, is... Ah, Jexe died late in the fight. So Jexe comes out late. Because Jexe comes out late, they lose a lot of the positioning and Edison gets gets uh, gets space, right? If, if you can always get your McCree into a situation like this, McCree is good against the Pharah, right? Uh, Rolled. <laughs> But it's about getting to this spot. And a, there's also a massive gamble that needs to be stated about Dallas switching to the second, uh, Farrah on the second point as well. As soon as they lose this fight on second point, they are out fucked. They, they need to find a way to adapt with like the Winston. Sparkle just goes down because Jexay goes for the res. Once again, Dallas is using all their ults to hold onto a fight that they're probably not going to win. Sparkle switch to the Doomfist. Actually, I actually don't mind this comp, actually. This comp switch by Dallas is actually fine. They've done a good job of adapting out of it. They've got the Brig, the Yana, the Winston. Oh, they're going to the Lucio now. And they got the Doom. I feel like... I would have stayed the Brig Anna, potentially, and just tried to make that work with the Doom. We'll see how this works. Hi, Shien. Thank you very much for two months. Wow. Wait. Wow. Wow. Is that... Is that Chinese? I, I feel like... Because Sab's family is Chinese. And they say... Wow. Way? Way? How do you... How do you say... I'm trying to remember how they say it. No? Okay. Well. There's a, there's something that's called like hello. In, in, which is like wow. Way. In uh, Chinese. I have to ask Sab. Way? It's the phone greeting, Wei. Ah. Is it just Wei? Cast the cultured? Not that cultured, as you can tell. Wei me? Oh, so it's like hello question mark. Ah, interesting. Wei with two eyes. Ah. Learning Chinese with Custa. If you are, if this is on Billy Billy, hello. I am learning Chinese as well. Very slowly and probably just in the worst way possible. But... Here we go. You're learning English. I'm learning Chinese. That's balance, baby. Oh, wow. How does Pelican stick the Doomfist? <laughs> Don't mind me. Just hanging out with the ladders and the forklifts. Oh, clean. Where is Jexe? <laughs> Jexe just like abandoned his backline, I feel like. I feel like this was a classic, like, you're like, let's go! And he went forward, and then he's like, oh, Doomfist, wait. Oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was definitely one of those moments. And it, they, this is the cost of that Dallas fuel switching to that Farah, as I said. They came into a fight with not great ultimates. Doa has the EMP, though. This is going to be, a, need to be an enormous EMP. Oh, Masar doesn't get hit by a great drop by Masar. Okay, so Atlanta gets that one. So Dallas, uh, Atlanta really believing in that third point hole. 
All right, now we're going to map five. Here we go. So unfortunately for the rain. Wait, does Dallas play Pharaoh Wrecking? They play the Pharaoh. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think they play Wrecking Ball. They play the Winston. So unfortunately for rain, the first round that they get is the best Pharaoh one. So let's see how this works. So Atlanta rain is now once again fucked. It works better on King of the Hill because all Atlanta needs to do is hold down the point and it sort of puts the onus on the Pharaoh to get a lot of work done. And Jexa goes down. Great play by the rain. That's like the best way to beat the Pharaoh is not to kill the Pharaoh usually. It's generally to kill the Mercy and kill everyone else around him because Fielder is probably playing in Narnia. Yeah, as you can tell right here, playing in Narnia because he's worried about getting dope. That was an awful name. Hawks just got baited really hard to go there. Nice barrage. He put himself out of line aside of a lot of people as well. Damn. The barrage is ridiculous, dude. Alright, so I would love to see Edison switch to Tracer. Or even Pelican switch to Tracer. Like, I feel like they worked out. I think the McCree Tracer is their best bet. Like, it worked for them last time. They need to do it. But once again, I think they're just going to get baited by keeping their mail. But what, are, what, what, what is Pelican going to do with his mail? He's probably going to get EMP'd on the... On exit. Well, that's one way to deal with the Pharah. Just absolutely murder them. Well, that works. Good job by the Atlanta Rain. Cost them a lot of ults, but it worked out. Getting that in initial kill under that barrel was nuts. Oh, so Pelican's actually going to run backwards? So you're going to go back to spawn? Yeah, I like this. I like this. Go Tracer. Please go Tracer. Please go Tracer. Please go Tracer. Please go Tracer. Yeah, I like this counter by Atlanta. I feel like they've, they've sort of come to this. I agree with what they're doing. If you want to play the Ryan and you want to play the Lucio, I think it can work. Dallas needs to be careful of the high noon now. And the problem with Pharaoh on King of the Hill is this, right? Like, they, it, it takes you so long to get into a fight and clean up a fight that if you just lose a couple of people, it, it feels really bad and the rank is so below from away from you so quickly. Who does Tracer punish here? The Mercy and the Anna and the Winston, right? So the best way to think about it, why the Tracer is good, is like, okay, so Pelican's on Tracer. Who on the Dallas Fuel deals with the Tracer, right? The Pharaoh shooting rockets at a Tracer is generally like a fool's errand. The Sombra needs to get a hack on the Tracer to really hold her accountable, but the Sombra's really going to be trying to get into the back line. The Winston just gets poked at by the Tracer, can't do anything against the Tracer. The Diva is trying to deal with, like, protecting the Pharah from the McCree and everything else. The Mercy's pocketing the Pharah, and the Anna is alone, right? So there is somewhat solutions to the Tracer, but for the most part, the Tracer's going to run free. And let me show you in this team fight. Ball can check the Tracer, kind of, but, but also the Tracer can check the ball. Uh, and I think the Tracer switch is why Fearless did go to the Wrecking Ball. I, I agree that the ball deals with the Tracer better. But look at how f afraid Hanbin has to play and protect the Diva, uh, the Anna. So all of a sudden, now Anna is not healing the front line. Anna is not healing his tanks, uh, the, her tanks at all. The entire time this is happening. The Anna's dealing with it. And then the, fa the Mercy is forced to come help the Anna. And then Sparkle dies, right? Because the Mercy has to come back to the Anna. And then all the Trace has to do is just, okay, that's fine. You want to do that? I'll, I'll run away. So this is the value of the Tracer. I think he should be shooting the Mercy, though. So Dallas does win that fight regardless. They do get the picks where it matters, but yeah.
Can we talk about how it's impossible to see the Fuels logo when they're playing home? I know this is all about coaching, but this is more important. That's true. Let me let me talk to the people that matter. Holy fuck, Fielder. All right, let me let me look at this slate. This slate's not that crazy. That's a good slate. Don't get me wrong, but it's not life changing. There's been some life changing sleep. Saved his life though. Yeah, hey, that's a great sleep. I'm not, I'm not disregarding that. That, this is a clutch sleep. Once again, not a hard one, but an important one. Four v four. They get a little split up there. They get the res, yeah. I think Pelican's doing a lot of work. They just haven't been able to win the frontline fight so far. I feel like Edison getting punished there was like if they if Edison doesn't get punished there, they probably win that round. Moment back is up in a four v four. It's over, yeah. So it seems like Atlanta has worked out how they want to counter this barrel, right? That's a good play. I like that. I like that. They got the McCree. They got the Tracer. The Tracer gives space to the McCree. The McCree uh, gives space to the Tracer. All those kind of things. So they're going to go for the Rhine. The Doom Genji, I, I just, I don't like. <laughs> but this is the most Dallas Fuel thing ever to see if they make it work. So they just have such a crazy fast dive with the Lucio Moira. Lily, everyone is an all-in character. I like it not because it's good, because it's unique. Yeah, and that's it. Like, if this is what you feel comfortable in and this is something you can do, like, fucking do it, right? So rain, I actually like the rain adaptation going to the Torb and the Reaper. Just like bunkering down on this thing. I think Masar needs to switch to the Brig if they're going to go this way. Oh, good shatter on the field of Gator. That was a big shatter by Gator. Imagine having two top five Genjis on your starting roster. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, right? One of the few teams that are able to play this Genji, dude. Doom ult. All right, so Dallas get the cap here, which is really important. This is the weakness of the Atlanta Reign playing that style. I think, yeah, like I think if Masao went to Brig and Gator went to Orisa, this would make sense. But I feel like they're really struggling to punish this Doom Genji with this. Genji's just getting isolated by Great Boston by Edison. Oh my. Some moist splooge on the point. Oh, the great re reaction beat by Jexe though. Recognizing that they just lost a, they just lost two. They need to go aggressive. They beat engage to counter the uh the Torbolt. Oh my god, that pin by Gator. <laughs> Atlanta needs to win this fight and they need to win it soon. Doe's about to get a blade though. Yeah. 
So all this time, Dallas is getting percentage, right? So da Atlanta lost so much for that fight. And Atlanta uses everything, as you said. They use Beat, they use Doomalt, they use Reap uh, Death Blossom. No, also, he really, not really made a thing. Yeah, but I think Diva's really good against Genji Doom. Like, because you can just fly at things. You can be more aggressive than if you play like a Sigma, right? It needs to be on Gator to hit a big shatter here. He gets one, not bad. The coal is a problem though. They don't really have a lot to deal with the coal. Yeah, and that should just be the round right there. I just think Dallas Fuel's, I, it's a really unique comp by Dallas Fuel going that Lucio Moria just playing a really, really fast comp that just overwhelmed the Atlanta rain. It's kind of hard for Atlanta rain to adapt in, on the fly like that. I think they either needed to bunker down harder or go more of a dive. Rusty, thank you for the prime sub. Yeah, like harassing Diva's good at harassing Doom, eating more orbs. The reason D Diva is so good as a hero overall is she's just good at everything, right? There's gen oh, <laughs> forgot this happened. There is generally a situation every time that is good for it. See, this happens to everyone. When I play Doomfist, everyone laughs at me when I do this. But when Sparkle does it, everyone laughs at him as well. <laughs> It's so funny when you're just stuck in that E animation, you're like, shit! Now the Doha Blade. Maybe a Diva Band would be interesting. It would be interesting to see where we ended up. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see Diva out. I don't know where we'd go to. I don't think we'd go Hog. I would say if we got a Diva ban, I think unless Brig gets banned and that really screws it over, I think we'd just go to Wrecking Ball Sigma. I think we'd go Wrecking Ball Sigma and like play like Farrakhan and stuff like that. Think East is gonna play Zaya? Maybe. Maybe the East will play Zaya and the West will play Sigma. We'll see. Dallas gets positioning on the point first. I don't like that Atlanta Rain gave up the point. Like, I, I just prefer the way that Atlanta got, uh, Dallas Fuel got onto the point, right? So Atlanta comes top to try and meet, but Dallas just takes the point. And I think they're in a much bigger advantage because they get the turret set up, they have the wall and they have the positioning. Now Atlanta has to walk into Dallas, unless Atlanta does something interesting. I'd almost like to see Atlanta like TP to the side or like TP behind them, you know what I mean? So like Dallas just get the first point here. So now this team fight is even more important for Atlanta. So they, they faked the TP, which I think was really good, but it doesn't catch Doa. Doa is nine head. He doesn't get caught by these kind of things. Dallas TPs into the back line. Fielder doesn't get the memo. Does he get fire strike through a window? Dude, Gator's, Gator is so good at this. Oh yeah, Fielder tries to get into the TP and gets caught by the window. So Dallas have a, have, a, have a timing, right? Dallas needs to win this fight quickly, and they don't. So that was a once again another fire strike uh, through a window that determines the team fight. TP was begging to get fire strike. Yeah, exactly right. It needs to be on. Uh, it needs to be on Harmin to eat those. Not Zaya Ball like Chengdu. I don't. I don't love the Zaya with Wrecking Ball. I, I really don't. I feel like Zaya just doesn't play at the same tempo. So it seemed like Atlanta thought that Dallas was going to TP over here, right? So they wanted to take the high ground above them and like go above them. But Dallas actually faked them out. So the TP doesn't go there. It actually goes under them in this direction. So Dallas once again gets control of the point. Oh my God, that's so loud now. And then we get a wall, we get a wall, we get a mail, we get a uh, thing. And generally in these fights, whoever's in mortality field dies first, loses. So Gator goes down and then the Dallas is just going to win from there. Why are they playing Sim Mei but not trying to play point? Yeah. 
it kind of feels like they they know that the Hanamura strat is good where you play on the point because you have the advantage. But it feels like they just don't want to play on the point against what Atlanta Rain is doing. But it feels like whoever gets the point control first wins. I guess that didn't happen on the first fight. Yes, this is the last map, Pink. Alright, so Atlanta's gonna go middle. So once again, Dallas is electing to just hold control of the point. There's a wall, there's a window. The wall is not very good by uh, Doa. You really want it to be on top of the wall so that they can't break it easily. Divon goes in from Hawk. Uh, I don't... It felt like... I only would have liked that bomb if they also TP'd while they did it. Felt like they just sort of threw that bomb in and then they Dallas was able to just rush forward into them. That mail by Pelican is very good though. Atlanta's getting the team fight win, so maybe Atlanta is just prioritizing having an advantageous positioning instead of having point control. But the the issue with playing that style is that Atlanta has won two out of the three fights, but only has 41% compared to Dallas's 73, right? So Dallas is just getting more percentage, more bang for their bucks. So Dallas is going to take the high ground. They actually they actually flip it up on the way that Atlanta is playing. So this time Dallas is saying, okay, well, we'll give you the point. We'll take the positioning. They have a lot of ultimates. Edison, Atlanta only has that wall while Dallas have Shatter. Dallas have um, Mayot. Actually, I remember this. If Fearless had been more of a Chad, he would have, first of all, done a 360. Second of all, Shattered as soon as he landed, right? This Shatter... Could have been enormous, but he hesitates. If he had just dropped it as soon as he landed, he would have shattered three, and it would have been alpha. But because he sta he stumbles on it, Gator gets his shield up. So he should have done a 360 and should have insta-shattered. But there's just too many ults from Dallas. Like, that mail from uh, Dolo is so good. Mail's just so good on this point in general, right? So you really need to get an eat if you're going to get that, uh, if you're going to get the value. And try and win that team fight. Why does nobody play Echo anymore? She seems very strong at the start of the season. Um, it, because people aren't playing Winston as much. Echo is good in a Winston Diva meta, but you don't do enough like burst damage at times with an Echo. Like I think you'll see more Echo in a Wrecking Ball meta, but yeah, in a Reinhardt meta, it's nowhere near as good. Dallas have good positioning here. Atlanta don't have the ultimates really yet. That's a great wall. That wall was so good by Doha. It can't be understated how good this wall is. In the this fight's broken down, there's windows, there's all these kind of stuff. Look at this May wall split skater away from the window, which is gonna want to work. The back line is stuck. Also, can't really get around. It forces them all into this direction. In which Fearless is about to just fucking slam. Oh, yeah. And that fight was over. That's not a C9. That fight was over. And Dallas get the win. That was close. That was close, though. I think Atlanta, once again, looked really good. I just don't think... They recognized too late how they wanted to deal with this Farrakhan position. Um, but interestingly enough, Dallas Fuel had the advantage in the brawl. When they played the Sim May, when they always played the Mirror Sim May, Dallas almost always won uh, in comparison to Atlanta Reigns' um, brawl. So they had the Pharah, but you know Atlanta had the Arissa compositions that I think sort of did sort of get them a couple of maps against the Fuel, but wasn't enough to get them over the line. Pretty good performance by Atlanta Reign, nonetheless. I think they're still they're pretty solidly the second best in the west after a great june joust performance and a good summer showdown performance and dallas feels the best but both these teams went on to lose to the hunters and the dragons unfortunately so but you know it is what it is hope you guys enjoyed the review i just wanted to have a look at both these teams sort of you know, okay sort of see what we feel about it see what they did uh because it is very different to what we saw i i might do another review in the next week or so at some point if i get bored enough of like hunters versus or, or shanghai versus atlanta versus dallas just sort of sort of nitpick at the farrah compositions against what the dallas and atlanta tried to play 
We'll see, but I'm not going to promise to it. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.